Yeah. The Lord has something here. I'm not sure what it is, but I'm going to pray in tongues and because I believe that's what the Lord wants me to do right now. And he has some words, so let's see what they are, okay? I feel there's a few things. Don't know yet, but we're going to find out, okay? Shakambarro. Thank you, Jesus. Shakarokoto. Shiatoloko rampatetiki. Mandearro. Shiharonta la ma. Manti. Patoko. Shiaharata. La mariti. Shiaronto lampa. Kantaka. Kientara parro. Manti ki hanta. Lo roto. Rapatiti kapatanda malata. Kashantolo. Marieta papatiki. Is it really true? That when you are resting, there is power. Is it really true that when you see striving, that my working, my energizing is released? Is it really true? When you are resting because of who I am, because you see my face, you hear my voice, Because I quicken your spirit and you delight in me and lie down before me. and I comfort you. I strengthen you. And you stay. I empower you to stay in that place with me. Then yes, it is true. As you were resting in me. It's my energy. It's my force. It's my power. That moves for you. So. I really am your good shepherd. And I really am leading you to the greenest place to feed and the best <coughs> waters of rest to drink from and to lie down beside. Shatara Maria Tamaro Totota Maria Shekata Tiriama Shekata. I don't measure time as you do. And what to you is a long time may not to me be at all. And what for you seems like just a short time, it may be something I've been waiting for for a long time. You can only grasp timing as your eyes are upon me and your spirit senses me and knows me. But it is time now. When my anger has been aroused against that which has afflicted my children, harassed them, at times thrown them down, my anger is aroused. And I'm looking for those who sense the call to me individually and corporately and they're turning their eyes, their hearts, their desires upon me and I'm imparting more glory and I'm accelerating faith I'm accelerating those who take my weapons and my armor, and they shall be deliverers. Amen. Now, that's the time it is. I'm accelerating this. And I'm gathering those, whether they be whole, whether they be taught, whether they be chore, whether they be broken, those who hunger and thirst for me. I'm not bringing the experienced just because they have experience. I'm bringing those who hunger and thirst. And they, they, they will not miss me because I'll guide them with their hunger. I'll guide them with their thirst. And I'll bring them to where they can drink and be equipped. 
Chateau Rantanamata. So, my children, I'm calling for loyalty at this time. Loyalty, 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 loyalty. There are ranks. There are some who would break ranks and say, I am anointed. I am this. I am that. And they, they come out from under the, the covering that I have over my people. And even out from under my authority and my will for them. So loyalty. And it's a word, parashakatata malaka, that many times my people see as a, like a side issue. It's not a side issue. I am bringing deep loyalty in the bonds of love in my people. Deep loyalty. It goes beyond just emotional enjoyment that you, that you have with each other and just just the, even the emotions of affection and enjoyment that you would have. It goes deeper than that. For I will not have my body split or divided or my army, each one off on his own mission. For I'm giving those who, those leaders who are who are tracking with me in the spirit, who are after my heart. That's right. They're truly after my heart and my desires. I'm giving them my commands and I'm increasing their authority and visibility. Yes, those leaders who are after my heart I'm increasing their visibility, even as I did to David, who spent those years, those times as a youth in a time of rejection by others, but favor upon me as he was growing in the spirit with me and growing in revelation and in heart development before me. Yes, even as he was a young shepherd. And then I gave him visibility and there were steps to his visibility. So I am giving visibility to those leaders who are shepherds after my own heart. And they will not be discouraged because of the price they have paid, even as David was not discouraged. They will not be discouraged but they will take their lives and offer them to me again in gratitude and in worship and offer all things to me and release a spirit of worship to my people to offer themselves to me and my glory will come upon my people as they yield to me and worship me. For I am increasing glory and where my favor is, it will not be as... Even in my word, where it says prophetically of Messiah that he was as an arrow hid in the quiver until the Father drew him out and placed him and released him. It will not be anymore where there is just hidden favor, when none see the favor that I'm giving and the, and the delights that I'm giving to the hidden ones. It will not just be that kind of favor, but as it has been spoken, I am increasing visibility. For it is time for those who hunger to know where to go to eat and drink and be healed and to rise up as healers. I am multiplying healers. I am multiplying healers. For I, the Lord, am your healer. Shantama toko parata lama toko to. Shata loko rumpata te tiki. Shata to rokota te makita. Parata lama loko to rumpata te tiki ta. 
Shata tokoram. Oh, Kathy, this is for you. Something for you here. Shakata maroto ma. Shakato lokoram matarakata. The Lord has been honing the the gifting of administration in you. Kalama rokoto lo marama la karama la karama teria shikata. Shikata loko rama rama la kata tetikia. Shika and you will administrate the baloko the feeding of women, the, the, the feeding of the bread of life and of and the administration of glory, shikara, and of the shaping of them for this there is a special ministry to women to take my place, and there are men who are who are jealous and even want to get in, and they will want to get in on the meetings because of the glory that's there. <laughs> And I'm sending special servants to you, special servants who know I've got to go to Kathy Bruno's meetings. I've, 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 I've got to be there. I, 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 I need to be there. So this, this, this thing I'm speaking of, of increasing visibility, it's upon you. And I'll give you wisdom. And you will invite ones to come. And they will say, yes, I must be there. I will give you wisdom and put on your heart who to invite. And when they come, I'll give them a special blessing because of their obedience. More than they imagined much more, and I will reward them. <laughs> and I just see you with Jesus. You're, you're like standing right beside him, and, 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 and you turn to him, and he, he faces you, and, and it's like you're saying to each other, we know this, and there's... <laughs> And it's just a, there's a boldness that's just come, that comes from this, we know this, you know. And uh, yeah, and Jesus likes that. <laughs> he likes you being like that with him. He likes it a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Oh, that's good. Amen. Amen. Mantaka. Mantiki. Katata tokoto. Shata rokoto lokota rambata titi kia shikata ta ramata rakoto. Shaka ranta te te riamata ranta te 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 shikato. Shikata de kota. What is it, Lord? Okay, he who spends, he or she, who spends time hidden from the eyes of men but known to God, informed by God and faithful unto him. He who spends time because of love for God, faithfulness unto him, spends time secretly with little visibility, almost in darkness, that is, hidden and not seen by many. That one I will give the treasures of darkness to. That one I will open up the treasures of darkness to, for I can trust them. That one who is given unto me when, there, when no eyes see, or few eyes see, that one who is given on to me faithfully. I'm endowing upon those ones anointing to go where there are treasures hidden in darkness, many times hidden by darkness. And I'm giving you keys to go into the darkness and take the treasures, to receive the treasures. Sold. Yeah. Amen. Amen. For there are treasures of wealth, of resources, but primarily, and that's what I was going to prophesy next, 
primarily, indeed, souls. So I'm seeing keys coming down, golden keys. I'm depositing and giving you keys for the treasures in darkness. Take these keys into your spirits. And souls will be released. They will be unlocked from the darkness that has blinded them. And they will respond. So take into your spirit these keys. For I have been searching for these treasures and my hand is upon them and they are ready. And I will lead you to the ones who are ready. Kora Maria Tata Maloko. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Mike, I didn't specifically say this word's for you, but much of what was said was for you. Okay, much of what was said. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Okay. Okay. Matthew, 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 Matthew. Is it um, 16? Um, you know, Jesus says, but who do you say that I am? You know. Thank you, Lord. Oh, um, I have some books. I've only ever written one. I've, I've written a bunch of little booklets, but one book, it's it's, it's sitting over there. If you want one, you, I'm not selling them. You may take one. If you want to give a donation, anywhere from five to ten will be fine, or whatever you can give. So they're over there. It's called um, um, uh, Steps to, um, or Release from in Invisible Barriers. I forgot to title my own book, whatever. Release from Invisible Barriers. Okay. Yeah, it's a workbook. Yes, I should probably say that. It'll work you through steps of deliverance and measures of healing for your heart and how to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in that. You know, so it's over there on the table. This green Big workbook. Okay. Um, I say, where are we? Matthew 16, um, verse 13. And now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, Matthew 16, 13, he began asking his disciples, saying, uh, well, just who do people say that the Son of Man is? Who do they think I am? You know, who do they say? Because you'll, whatever, whatever, level of revelation or whatever you really believe in your heart if, if you know if you listen to your own talk long enough you'll hear it or if someone else listens to your talk long enough they'll hear it now you may say the right words if someone asks you what's the answer to this question you may say the biblical answer okay but really what are you saying all the time you know what I mean that's 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 the level that of faith that where you are, you really, for the mouth speaks out of that which fills a heart, Jesus said. It's true. It really is. Okay. So, he, Jesus, what's he after? He's trying to, to, to gauge what level, of, you know, what measure of revelation that people have received from the Father, you know, by the Holy Spirit. And it'll be evidenced by what they're saying. He wants to know if they're really receiving the revelation of who he is, if they're getting it. That's why he's asking that question. Okay, and um, verse 14, and they said, some say John the Baptist. <coughs> kind of a far shot, but you know, like John the Baptist came back or something, you know, he, he had died, okay. Um, and others, Elijah, well, the Old Testament said Elijah would come, and here's Jesus doing miracles like Elijah did, and, and um, so some say, hey, it must, and the Old Testament does say that there is going to be a time when Elijah is coming back, okay? And reading the book of Revelation, and, you know, and that this speaks of a couple guys. Elijah might, might be one of those, okay? But anyways, so, and, uh, but still others. Jeremiah are one of the prophets. Well, they just kind of made that up. I mean, it's never promised that those prophets will come back. But people just think and they speak. I, I think we do that, don't we? We just think about something and then say it. 
may have nothing to do with what God said or what he purposed, but we just think about it and we just say what we think. We really need to, uh, revelation, don't we? I mean, we really need to like hear from God. We need to know what God said. We need to know the truth. We really need to be alive unto God and, and, and in that being alive unto him, communicate with God. Okay, we, we need to hear from leaders God has raised up where he's giving revelation. So, we, so anyways, and then Jesus said to them, but who do you say that I am? You know, I mean, I imagine as these disciples are answering Jesus, I mean, it's just in one verse, verse 14. They, some say this or that. Well, it may have, I mean, we can read that in about two seconds or something. You know what I mean? Two or three seconds. But it may have been a conversation longer than that. The Bible has to abbreviate things or it'd be a whole library if it, of, the, of the conversations and works and miracles of Jesus. So much of what, it has to be abbreviated, a lot of it. You know what I mean? So there could have been a lively conversation, you know, you know, you know, Philip says, yeah, somebody thinks you're this guy, this prophet. Yeah, well, someone, you know what I mean? We don't know what the conversation was. But then Jesus turns it from what do, what do the masses think? What are they saying? To, but who do you say I am? Who am I to you? Who do you believe I am to you? And that that's what's coming out in what you say. Who do you say I am? Jesus comes to us. And he comes. His beauty, his loveliness, his graciousness, his tenderness, and all that he is. And just sits down with us and says, Beloved, who do you say that I am? Now, and Simon Peter, verse 16, answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Man, that just came right out of him. It just came right out of him. You see, what happens is the Father has given a love gift to us. It's his Son, the fullness all the fullness of God in Jesus Christ. It's a love gift from the Father. <coughs> and we're called to fellowship with Jesus. We're called to, that everything we do, whether it's success or failure, whether we think it's success or failure, just to keep fellowshipping with Jesus. And every, there's no other way to approach anything or do anything. Okay? It's in relationship with him. It's in intimacy with him. Everything through him. Nothing looking at it, thinking of it apart from him. Nothing apart from him. I'm the vine, you're the branches. Keep abiding in me. Keep drawing from me. Everything. Join to me. Okay. What? 1 Corinthians 1 9. But God is faithful, who's called us into fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ. That's what it says. That's what we're called to. We're called to fellowship with Jesus. Here's my love gift to you. Just keep fellowshipping with him. Okay. And the Father has given Christ to us, and then the Father, by his Spirit, is revealing this love gift to us who he is. He's creating in us the revelation of Jesus, writing it on our hearts so that we act on that revelation. It comes out and we speak it right to Jesus. You are to me. And who he is is activated. Who he is is then activated in our life. And the mind says, it's not that easy. I have to feel something more. I have to do. No, no, I'm telling you how it works. That's why this is in the Bible. So, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, which means literally son of the dove, I think that means. Barjona is what it means. Because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. You know what a blessing is? When the Father reveals Jesus to you. You are blessed. Okay? As the Father reveals who Jesus is to you, that's where the blessing is. That's who's been given to you. That's every spiritual blessing that is. Every blessing that is, is in Christ, okay? And Christ has been given to you and everything that's in him. And, I, I mean, that's the blessing, the Father revealing Jesus to you. That's the fount, the root of, of all, of everything right there, okay? Blessed are you because, you know, <laughs> flesh and blood didn't reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I say to you that you are Peter. Now, as I understand it, that is a... A, a, um, a Greek word, it is, Petros. 
Okay? And he's not going by his Hebrew name, Simon Barjona. Jesus is telling him his identity. Wow. This is who you are. How do you know you're, how do you know who you are? The father draws you into fellowship with his son, Jesus. You honor Jesus. He draws you in and he reveals, and you go after, you start drinking of the Lord. You thirst and you come to him and, and these living waters start coming up out of you and you want more and you keep coming to him and the father is revealing and you say back to Jesus who he is and in that, a revelation of who you are comes to you. In that, the revelation of who you are comes to you and that identity of who you are, you only get that from God. The revelation of, of who Jesus is only comes from the Father, only comes by God, by the Spirit. The revelation of who you are only comes through your relationship with Jesus, only through him, only through. You see, seeing who he is and saying back to him, that's where God reveals who you really are. Why? Because everything in your whole life is trying to tell you you're somebody else. Amen. That's called the prince of the power of the air that works in the sons of disobedience. The air is energized with something saying, this is who you are, I'll tell you who you are. This is what you'll do, this is what you won't do. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's the whole spirit of the world that's here. You see, and only by revelation will God say, this is who you are. And when he tells you who you are, verse, okay, verse 18, and I say to you, Man, I tell you, when he says to you, he says to you. Remember one time, I was like bummed out with myself. It's like for several days here, I keep wrestling with this issue. What is my problem, you know, going on, you know, and, and I'm in this meeting during worship, and it's like the Lord says, look into my eyes. I mean, I, mean, I didn't hear a voice, but I just had that sense of, oh, it's time, to, I'm just, I'm to, I'm to quit thinking about myself. You know what I mean? You know, yeah, I think it is time, you know, okay. And okay, Jesus, and I just look at him, and I have a sense of, no, it's not an open vision. It's just a sense of this. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean, you could easily ignore it and just go on, you know, Lord, don't interrupt me now, I'm busy. You know what I mean? You know, I'm, I'm busy thinking about my issues here, and I'm trying to deal with them, trying to straighten myself out. Can't you see I'm busy now? You know what I mean? But you get this just quiet sense of, it's time to stop this foolishness. You know what I mean? You know, okay, it's kind of time. But yet, I really got to deal with this and judge myself. And get, you know what I mean? No, no. Look into my eyes. That thought, that just a thought comes. You're going to honor that or not? Or are you going to play your little religious deal and just, you know, and I mean, what are, you, what are you going to do at that point? What are you going to do? Okay, well, I had enough sense at that moment. I just looked up. You know what I mean? Yes, you know what I mean? And, and then I had this on the screen of my imagination, if you want to call it. If that offends you, we'll say it some other way. We'll, we'll just call it a low-level vision because it wasn't a big open vision. It's just, but, but just like a sense, like a mental image of flames all around me. And I'm standing before Jesus. And he said... I mean, he's plumbing me up, man. He said, I tell you who you are. Yes, sir. <laughs> Why? Because the enemy was writing on my heart. He was doing the best he can to block out, to suppress, to, er to erase the identity of who I am that the Lord is building in me for years. And to give me another identity that Satan for years has been trying to tell me who I am. And... Isn't this something that the, the identity that Satan will give you will never destroy the works of darkness? Isn't that amazing? It will never do that. You think he's motivated to give you that false identity and to co confirm it with a thousand weaknesses you have or all sorts of circumstances? Or Yes, yes, he's quite willing to do that. Why? Because it never destroys his works. Okay. So God says, I tell you who you are. I mean... It wasn't quite like that, but it was like, it was just like, I tell you who you are. I mean, it was like, yes, sir. And then all this fire was around me, and I just knew that if, and when I relate to him in reality and not in la-la land and my thoughts, whatever they were, whatever, you know, I mean, I'm serious. In the natural, you don't know what else to do, but it's la-la land. I'm sorry. That's not reality. Reality is you and Jesus and what he tells you. I mean, that's, that's truth. Regardless of how sincere and how much you're striving and trying and everything else, it can still be law, law, land. Okay? We got we, we to gotta have the reality with Jesus. Period. Because that that's the only thing that works. Everything else is that sand. You're building on it. And it's not going to work. It's going to fall down. I mean, it's just, it, that's, that's, that's like foolishness. It just doesn't work. Okay? God, help us. Help us. Help us, God. Okay. Thank you, Lord. 
So, and I knew all these flames would be like in a moment, God could burn up all the issues and all the weaknesses and all the problems and all the dispositions to do this, whatever. And those were not the issue. The issue was, am I going to let him tell me who I am? Yes, sir. I've got my mind obsessed on the wrong issue. The issue is my eyes and yours. And you talk to me and that's on my heart. That's it. That's, that's where I'm going. Who do you say I am? And when you tell him who he is, he tells you who you are. Okay. I mean, that little bit of revelation that comes from Holy Spirit, revealing the heart of God and revealing who Jesus is to you. Man, man, I tell you what, just use that for all you can. Get all the mileage out of that. Okay, you know what I mean? I mean, because that's how God works. I mean, I'm serious, man. Okay, I mean, you, you stack all your problems here, and then you get this little bit of revelation that feels like this, and your issues feel like that, and how long they've been going on. Let me tell you something. This is much more. Amen. God's not, like, stupid. I'm serious. He knows what he's doing with you and what he's giving you. You track with that, and you keep tracking, okay, and all this goes, it starts wooden away, and sometimes the enemy will come in and fight and make it feel like it goes like this. Just keep tracking with Holy Spirit. You're not under the law of God. Jesus came under the law of God. Our sins came upon him. Our rebellion came upon him. And the law of God demanded that he be tortured, that he die, that he go. I mean, that all the curse would be fulfilled in him. So that the law, the, the demands of the law, the holy righteous law of God could be satisfied. And it could be taken out of the way between all who believe in Jesus Christ as their Savior. It's not between you and God. You're not under the law of God. You're under the lordship of Jesus. And God is your father. You're under the nurturing of God. Okay, so you, while you're growing, there can be issues. I'm not saying I have a license to go sin and it's okay and I don't have to worry about it. Duh, that's stupid. I mean, it's just stupid. If you walk into a lion's cage, that is, if you walk into some sin or do this or that, and you stay there and say, hey, I'm not under the law of God. You're going to get eaten alive, Bubba. And I don't, that's stupid. I mean, it, it, I don't care whether you're under the law of God or not. You, you, you do things that, that hurt and you're going to get hurt. That's it. That's it. You know what I mean? So it's not a license to do what you want, and, and God makes everything lovely. It doesn't matter. No, no, it doesn't work that way. It never will work that way. It's, you know, what it is, it's an open door to fellowship with Jesus and let him change us and grow into who we, who we are in the spirit. I mean, really, that's, that, that's what it is. Oh, God. And it's courage to keep growing. It's courage to love God with all your heart because we've got to grow. Amen? We've got to grow. We've got to keep going. Okay? And come into things and see breakthroughs. And God does it by grace. So who do you say that I am, he says to me. And when we tell him who he is that comes from that revelation we're getting, I say to you, it's who you are. You are a rock, Petros. And upon this rock, Petra, which in Greek means a huge, like, you know, huge rock, like a, what do they call it, the, uh, like a foundation stone or bedrock. Huge, huge thing. And upon this rock, what? Of this whole process of the Holy Spirit revealing to you who Jesus is to you. And out of that revelation, you're, you know and you're speaking it right back to him and, and you're communing with him. Out of that, he's, you find your identity and, and that is the rock of revelation. And upon this rock, I will build my church. Oh, that's how he does it. Yeah, that's how he does it. Oh, that's how he builds us up and builds us up together. Oh, yep, that's how he does it. Oh, that's how he does it. Oh, I can do this. Because... And the gates of hell will not overpower it because that's what Satan can't overpower. I mean, sometimes I've quoted Bible verses a long time and then God like breaks through my, you know what I mean? And, um, and you just, and, and you're doing it with faith. You're doing it out of revelation now and it makes all the difference. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not against quoting Bible verses. I quote a lot of Bible verses. I think I go around the house thinking, I go around the house praying in tongues and little Bible verses come out and whatever, you know, my wife knows me. I mean, I, I do, you know, whatever. I mean, that's not all. I don't want to give you the impression that's all I do. It's not, but I do it. 
I'll be walking through the store sometimes and I'll pray and tugs and my wife's looking at you're at a store, you know, whatever, you know. Has that ever happened? Yeah, it's happened. And I frankly don't really care that much. I'm sorry, honey. I love you, but I just, you know, it's like, it's just me and God, whatever, you know, it's whatever, you know. I do care because I don't want to embarrass everybody too much, especially the woman I'm married to, but okay. Yeah, that was a sidetrack. Okay, anyways. And, and, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, verse 19. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose, loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Now, that's pretty good, isn't it? And what does it come out of? Okay, what do the people say? <coughs> yeah, yeah, they say this or that. Yeah, but what do you say? Because Father God has given us a love gift. It's his son. Last verse, and then we're going to go on from there. Ephesians. Pardon? Did you? Oh, yes. All man what? Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. I got you. I got you. I was a little slow there. Well, it was a lot slow there, actually. It was very slow there. Okay, Ephesians 1. It talks about what the Father has done. Verses 22 and 23, we're ending there. It talks about the Father after the, res after the death and resurrection of Christ, and Jesus is enthroned above all. And it says, And the Father put all things in subjection under his feet, under Christ's feet, and gave him, gave Christ, as head over all things to the church. The Father's love gift is that he who is Lord over all, over every name who has conquered all things, this, this victorious Jesus who is head over all in his headship and lordship and victorious nature is, and his kingship is given to us as a gift from the Father, is given to us, the church. Woo! Is that good? And has given him who is head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. When it says all in all, that's just not like an expression. Jesus fills all in all in me. No, no. What it really means is that when the father looks at his church, what he sees is what he has created is that Jesus fills everything in every single member of the body of Christ. He fills all. He, he completely fills everything in each member. What? The fullness of Christ fills everything and is the complete life of each member of the body of Christ. That's what God sees. That's, that's, the, that's the new nature, the new man that's in us. That's the seed that has to grow into the reality of this. And that's what the Father sees in us, and that's what he speaks to, and that's what he's bringing forth. <coughs> yeah, we've got a good love gift from the Father, don't we? Jesus, who is head over all things. Jesus, our life. Amen. Who is he? Well, everything he says he is. Look, man, we're on this track. It only goes one way. And the direction it goes is like, I'm building my church. The gates of hell will not prevail against it. I am your life. Okay, whatever you bind is bound. Whatever you loose is loose, man. Okay, you speak as my representative here on earth and from heaven. It's loosed. You bind here on earth, and what's in the heavenlies gets bound, man. I mean, I'm serious. What you forbid is forbidden. What you allow is allowed. Okay, I mean, this tracks. Just go one way. Jesus, we're with you. We're going that direction. Okay, thank you, Lord.